In this problem, we are asked to complete the probability distribution, then calculate the mean and standard deviation. So our random variable values are listed here. In other words, the values that the random variable could take are all in that first column. So those are all the possible outcomes. Then in the next column, we see the corresponding probabilities for each individual outcome. Now one of them is missing, but we know that the probabilities of all possible outcomes when added together should add up to one. So if we can just take all of these and add them together and then do one minus that total, we'll be left with whatever is missing from here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to just copy the table over into Excel. Oopsie, I pushed the wrong thing. Let me try that again. Fingers slipped. All right, let's try that again. There we go. All right, so that, that one right there is going to be 1 minus the sum of all these. Well, actually, let me do this in a separate cell. There's something wonky going on with how that's pasted in there. And what I'll do is I'll do a couple of steps. So first, I'll add up um, what's in all the cells in that second column. And notice that it is less than 1, which I was expecting. Now, if we take that and we do 1 minus that amount, we'll have the missing probability, which should be 0.48. So I'm going to type that in there and test it. Your submission has been blocked. Whoa, what just happened? Um, that was this is something that has never happened to me before. So I'm going to pause the recording and figure out what's up. Okay, so I just reloaded the question and tried again, and it took it took my answer. Normally, no no strange um, error messages this time. So um, it was some kind of strange glitch. Seems like everything's okay here, so we'll continue on. Um, the next part of the question is asking for the mean. Now, when calculating the mean for a probability distribution, you want to multiply each possible value of the random variable times its probability of occurring. And then once you have all of those products for each row, you're going to add them together. That's how we get the mean. So that is, um, I can write that out as a formula for us just so that we can reference it with the um, reference packet I provide my students with um, for my class. Or in your textbook, you would find um, something that either said the mean, it might say the mean, or it might even say expected value because they're the same thing just different ways of referring to this. So the mean or expected value is either mu if it's expressed as the mean or if it's um, expected value it might say e of x, right? So either one of those notations is fine depending on how you're, you know, if you're ever asked to give the expected value you would probably want to use this notation and if you were asked to give the mean you would probably want to use mu. Um, but here we're just concerned with the numerical answer. Now the formula to get this is the sum. So in mathematics, we use the capital letter sigma to represent summation, adding together the summation of the products of each x value, each random variable value that's possible, times its corresponding probability. So that is what we're doing here. So in my... Um, my Excel spreadsheet up over here, my little work work area here. Um, remember, the first part is x, the second part is p of x, the first column is x, and the second column is p of x, the probability of x. So I'm going to make a working column x times p of x, and then I'm going to multiply the first x value times that first probability using relative references. I know I did that really fast. I just put in an equal sign and then clicked on the uh, first x value, negative 5. 
So I'm clicking on the cell containing negative 5, so that's a relative reference that can shift. So I'm going to be able to copy this formula down. And then I multiplied it times the contents of cell B2 in the next column, the first um, probability in that um, in the first row, second column. Right? And when I multiply those together, I get negative 0.9. Now I can use the copy handle down in the right-hand corner, make sure my cursor looks like a plus sign, and then drag that down, and it'll copy for me. I went a little too far. Let me delete that last one. All right, so now I have all of my um, products here in this third working column. Now, if I just add those together, I will have the answer that I need, which is the mean or the expected value. So um, I don't need these anymore. I can get rid of this. And then I'm just going to put over here the mean or the expected value is the sum of all these products here. So in Excel, SUM is the formula that adds up contents of all the cells that you select. And I press enter and I get an answer of negative 0.12. Now it did say we should round our answers to two decimal places. That's suggested or recommended. So I'll go ahead and put it in since it's already to two decimal places. Now I got it wrong. So I need to consider, oh, I know what's wrong. I forgot to put my um, 0.48 into this version of my table. So now I don't know if that, mm, yeah. So the way that this copies is a little funky. Um, what you can do instead is, let's try it with text. So I'm going to copy my table again. And then when I paste it in here, let's first see if we can just get rid of all the contents here and see what happens. Yeah, it's still not getting rid of this weird thing right here. So I'm going to do a totally new version of it, and I'm going to paste it in as text. Okay. Um, now when I do that, I can get rid of that second probability um, value, which just said correct because I had <laughs> answered it correctly. Um, now I'm going to put in the 0.48, which is what the, uh, the um, numerical probability is. And then I'm going to, again, do the x times p of x column, which is really fast to do when using relative references. And then copy it down and then get the mean by adding or summing all of the products. And then this answer makes, hopefully is going to give us uh, a correct, a check mark. Let's go ahead and see. Oh, I went to the wrong thing. Let me try that again. So now this answer, let's see, negative 0.6. And um, it did say to round to two decimal places, so um, I felt confident to just put it in, but it's a good idea to go if it's only showing you, um, if it's showing you fewer decimal places in Excel than you want, or that fewer than is recommended for the problem, I suggest that you should right-click the cell and go down to Format Cells in the uh, pop-up menu, and then Go to the number tab. It usually defaults there. You can see up at the top there's all these different things you can change to format cells, but it usually lands on number, or if not, you can go up and click on number tab. Then you're going to choose number, format, and you can set your number of decimal places that it's going to display. Um, while I'm talking about this, I just want to make sure you understand that when you set the number of decimal places, you are not rounding the value you're only setting the number of decimal places that it will display. So um, the cell still contains the entire value, even though it might only be showing some of the decimal places. All right, and then I'm going to press OK. And um, now I can see the two decimal places and be more confident that there's no you know, other number hiding there other than zero. Um, and even if I put in the zero, just to be extra safe and put in the two decimal places that were requested, 
it does just fine that way as well. Then it's asking us for the standard deviation. Now the formula for the standard deviation of a um, random variable is um, sigma is the value, or I'm sorry, the symbol that we use to represent the population standard deviation. And then the formula is we're going to uh, take the square root of the variance and the variance is sigma squared, right? So sigma squared is variance, right? Whereas um, the square root of the variance is the standard deviation. And the variance formula is the summation of, now we're gonna take each individual x value and subtract the mean and see how different they are, right? And then whatever that difference is, we wanna square it so that it becomes positive if it happens to be negative. All the, all the differences become positive, so all the deviations from the mean become positive. That way when we add them up, they don't cancel each other out. And then we multiply all that times the probability of the corresponding x, uh, the corresponding probability of each individual x value. So for each row we do this, and then we add them, right? So we're gonna be doing that in a new working column And I'm just going to move over my, my writing here. And this is going to be my x minus the mean. I'll say mu. I'll type it out, mu, because it's easier than put, you know formatting the actual symbol here. Um, so the quantity with parentheses, x minus mu to the power of 2, then times the probability of x, and now I'm going to put in the first row, let me make this a little bigger for you all so you can see. So in that first row, I'm going to do the equal sign, then a parenthesis, then I'm going to check, uh, click on the first x, first cell containing the first x value, then subtract the mean. Now the mean I do recommend clicking on the cell containing the mean. And when you do this, though, you have to make sure it's not a relative reference that will shift when copy when you copy the formula down because you don't want to go to the cell below it and the cell below it and the cell below it for these other ones. You always want to refer to that same mean. So we're going to make this an absolute reference. And that means that we're going to kind of put a pin in it so it just stays right there. So even though we do want the x value reference to shift as we copy down the formula, we do not want this one to shift. So we're going to make that absolute. Now the way that you do that is you put in dollar signs. Um, if you're copying just downward, you really only need a dollar sign in front of the row reference. So I could get away with only pinning the row reference uh, um, so that it only refers to the second row because um, that is where my mean is. is it's in the second row here or row two of the spreadsheet um, but I usually even though I'm not I may not be copying left or right in this particular formula sometimes you are doing left and right copying you can do that as well so I usually just tell students to go ahead and make everything absolute both the column reference and the row reference and that's you know just a little more complete um, that works in more scenarios um, and then you want to close that quantity off and raise it to the power of 2. Now, let me back up a step. Um, I'm going to go back to when I clicked on the cell G2. A shortcut for putting in those dollar signs is to just do your F4 key on your keyboard. And it will automatically insert those dollar signs for you. But you saw me do it by hand the first time. Um, and then we're going to raise it to the power of 2 with the caret key, which is above our number 6 on the keyboard, then you are going to multiply that quantity squared times the first cell containing the first probability in the second column, and then press Enter. Now we'll copy that down, and we just want to add those up to get our variance. Okay, so when we add up all those products here in that column that we just did, that is the variance.
Okay, so the variance. I'm gonna let's see. I need some more room here. I got all this stuff in the way. I can probably just go ahead and delete it. Remember, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So I'm going to first find the variance by adding all those values together. Whoops. Okay, so this would be our sigma squared is the value uh, right here, the sum of all these right here. Okay, that was my variance. I'll make it bold, just make it stand out more. Then the standard deviation is just taking the square root, and in Excel that's SQRT, and then the square root of the variance. So this will be our standard deviation. We are told to round it to two decimal places. Um, it, sa it says we may, right? It says right here you may round your answers to two decimal places. Now, that means that it should accept it even if I don't round it. So I just copied it from my Excel spreadsheet and I pasted it in here. So I really have the option because it says you may, of round, I have the option to round it to 2.66. But um, it should work even if I don't. So you can see there, it did accept my answer without being rounded. Um, and so th for this problem, it's it's really just a recommendation or it, it's, it's just letting us know that if we want to be able to round, we can. And that if we round to two decimal places, that should be enough to get it marked correctly. So that was an option in this one. That's the way it was worded. In some of these problems, you actually have to do it exactly the way it says to the exact number of decimal places. So what I tell students is just, you know, follow whatever the recommendations are. Whatever you see, just go ahead and follow that to be on the safe side. If you're, if you, if you're questioning it at all, just go ahead and follow that recommendation. All right. So that is how we answer this question, and I hope that was helpful. Uh, I did do kind of a speedy version of this. There are more lengthy videos where I explain all of this in finer detail. So um, go back to the lesson module if you need to see that in more detail. Thanks.